And if you're serious about gardening and you're in the market for a house, only buy one with flood irrigation. <laughs> because the water bill for a property that floods like a lake twice a month throughout the entire year is 100 bucks a year. Wow. When I got this property, it was a clay lot and I wanted a bigger yard in the city because I was teaching six, seven classes of martial arts, fitness, and yoga a day. Yeah. And um, the economy was tanking. So we bought at the bottom of the market. And so I was having to do like, you know, 14 hour days just to make the bills because it was tough from 2008 to 2012. Mm -hmm. It's getting a little better now, now that we have this great new administration. <laughs> oh, yeah. I don't even want to go yeah. there. <laughs> and I just planted like three fruit trees. I took a few classes like from Greg Peterson on how to harvest rainwater off your roof. I learned a few classes how to do a backyard water feature like a pond. And um, I got really kind of like, I got the bug for growing right. my own food. And I'd already been vegan, which means totally plant-based. I don't eat anything but plants and fruits and nuts and grains and seeds and rices and that kind of stuff. And so I'd already been vegan at that point for about 10 years. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if I can lessen my food bill by growing some food at home? Because I was consuming, I'm, I'm an active guy, I was consuming like thousands of calories a day and my food bill's over a thousand fifty hundred bucks a month because yeah. when you teach seven classes of fitness a day it's draining physically and emotionally oh, yeah. you can only teach so many people before you start hating people <laughs> right. like I like you guys for like an hour yeah. <laughs> yeah. hour three I'm gonna kick you guys out and at least 50 times in the last three years folks find my house from YouTube and they just pull up randomly and want to come and hang out and I'm like you know, I got a life and I'm not just, uh, anyways, this is not Disneyland. But so I started out with a peach tree and a pomegranate and pomegranate is tree six on our list. Any variety of pomegranate, the granadas. I don't put stone fruits on the list because peaches, apricots, plums, I think will grow great here, but they're not my top 13. There's a lot of trees on my list, but the top 13 are the ones I'm going to tell you that I know will work. Number seven is carob. This tree here is a brand new, maybe like a couple years old, a fruiting female carob, because there's a male and female of the carob tree. That's a female, produces the fruits that taste like chocolate. You ever go in the store and gotten carob chips instead of chocolate chips? That's the carob tree. And if you're in the city, you don't need a male because believe me, there's enough males around. Um, number seven is mulberry. So as a kid, we know the nursery rhyme, the mulberry bush, the mulberry bush. Plant, or is that eight or seven? Eight. Good. Seven. Eight, okay, eight. Mulberry bush, but only by a female because a lot of city codes don't want you to plant male because it produces allergens and pollen in the air. And most of the city codes that say no olive and no mulberry, it's mostly for corporations because they don't want somebody to buy a three acre lot, do like a new high rise building and then do all the landscaping as mulberry and olive to make pollen out of control. But there's no tree police for home gardeners who are producing food. No one's gonna arrest you and take away your powers or like imprison you for, oh, what are you in for? Uh, mulberry. <laughs> What's that? I was saying, unless you have an HOA. Oh yeah, but even my friend, uh, Justin Rohner, who does the agriscaping company, yeah. go do his tour, agriscaping.com. Justin's a good guy and he does a home tour and he's in an HOA. He does chickens, edible landscape, Yay. and he's he's worked with his HOA to make it so that they can set a precedent for other HOAs to make everything work. Like for instance, he has chickens in his yard, HOA. The HOA says no chickens. And he said, well, my neighbors have these macaws. Yeah. I love it. Right? Yeah. Chicken macaw, they're both birds, yeah, right. right? So he looked up the HOA rules and thought, okay, there's, there is something that says no chickens, but it says you're allowed to have um, some kind of jungle fowl. So he just calls his chickens the jungle fowl. <laughs> and the HOA was cool with that. And as long as you are living by the laws of humanity, which means make them not smell, make right. them not loud. Exactly. Yeah. You know, don't let your neighbors complain. If you, guys, if you guys violate the rules of the city, but your neighbors never hear anything and don't even know about it, that's the real law, you know. I'd rather have my neighbors be cool with what I'm doing than the city right. be cool with what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So. I only have like five chickens by city code. Can you hear them? Nope. nope. Maybe like once a day you can hear them. I try to train them to be quieter. I have no rooster, because right, no, no rooster in the, in the city. And they're all adopted from Craigslist and they produce one egg a day each. Yeah. And um, I just adopted them. So I don't breed them and I'm not going to be mail ordering the chicks because I'm a vegan guy and I hate using animals for human uses. I had never held a chicken in my life before six years ago and I was teaching Roger Klein the Peacemaker's Kids yeah. Kung Fu. You guys know that guy? Yeah. yeah. Musician. And uh, 
his wife was like, hey, Jake, we don't want our chickens anymore because they live over here in Tempe. And uh, they just gave me their chickens. Within five seconds, my dogs chased them away. <laughs> so I had to go, and I just moved in. So I had to go, this is like 2011. I had to go meet my neighbors because my chickens were on their roof. <laughs> and the conversation was like, oh, you have chickens. I'm like, yeah, for like five seconds. <laughs> and I started learning about it, and now I got it down pretty well. So they have a nice coop, a basement. They have a nice run, and they have a good life over there, and they're not being slaughtered anymore, so they're okay. I wish I could adopt more if I had more land. What are we at as far as trees go? Eight, eight. right? Eight, eight, yeah. Mulberry bush was A wild. pecan tree. Pecan tree is nine. Somebody in the Facebook group posted a picture of Camelback Mountain from like 80 years ago. There's no mansions there. There's no millionaires there. It's just all farms. And you know how Camelback Mountain has all the flood irrigation around it? It's because it was farms. And around Camelback, you'll still see a bunch of date palms, right? And citrus trees. Okay. That's the remnants of the old farms around Camelback. And they used to grow citrus, date palm, and pecan. So why would you grow anything different? Don't try to grow an avocado from the beginning. Even though avocado trees are sexy and everybody wants avocados. Grow what works first. Pecan, mulberry, the carob, uh, citrus, and date tree. And what's good about mulberry and pecan and carob is that ultimately they're an enormous tree that creates a top <laughs> canopy of forest that will provide wind protection and microclimate to the bottom canopy which is your stone fruits and your citrus stuff like that okay. tenth tree that i think works great here is guava or the guayabas um, who has never had a guava before you got to plant one to taste it they're great and you will learn to love it at first you're like what the hell is this and then you start to learn oh i like this and the pink guava is the best and they grow amazing here they can take the cold they stay evergreen they can take the heat but if they're not a native tree, give them a microclimate of shade. So the guava and everything else will appreciate afternoon shade. And when does afternoon shade start? Oh my God, two o'clock, you've already killed all your trees. <laughs> like 10.30 in the morning. If the sun rises in the summer at 5.30 or five o'clock, by 10.30, your fruit trees are toast. So afternoon shade is like 11 a.m. If you got a non a native fruit tree in your yard in Phoenix, and it's 11 a.m., that tree should already be getting some diffuse shade. Like the mesquite tree here, this big mesquite, puts off edible, um, edible uh, yellow pods. They're in the pea family that I can grind up like flour and use my own mesquite flour for pancakes or whatever. It's providing shade for everything underneath it, especially when the summertime hits, okay? So number 11 is anything that's, that's native. It's a big category. So give me some native trees really quick. Ironwood, that's an ironwood behind you guys right there. If you touch that, it'll kiss you and hook you in, painfully. Palo Verde is one. Ironwood Palo Verde, mesquite. What else were you saying? Acacia. How about the desert willow? It has the word desert in it. Okay, those are some good ones. And everything we just mentioned is edible. My acacias here, when they put off their, off their seed pods, they're kind of green right now. I can pop the green bean, the green uh, seeds out of there like edamame at a sushi restaurant. Same thing with the Palo Verde. See my Palo Verde starting to get some yellow flowers at the top? It'll eventually get loaded with yellow flowers and every one of those flowers is edible. You can garnish a salad with it. The ironwood flowers taste better and they fruit in about, I would say a month from now edible flowers and once the flowers produce the pods the pods on the inside the outside is not so good but the inside is like green edamame they're fantastic once it's overripe come like june the green seeds turn black and hard no longer edible they're just good for like planting but those trees if you go hiking with me we go for like a week in the desert with no food and we just find our food no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not that crazy. But I do enjoy when I'm hiking, eating the prickly pear fruits and eating all the native trees and all that kind of stuff. And I know enough now of the native stuff in Phoenix to forage pretty well out in the desert. So I'll walk around the desert for like four days when I'm hiking wherever I'm at, Coconino, Tonto, whatever. And I will pick the prickly pear fruits with my finger. I'll twist them and break them off the cactus and just keep hiking and grab a rock. And just while I'm hiking, I'll shave the spines off and I just, like a tube of toothpaste. Throw it down and get another one. It's awesome. And cactus fruit for an athlete is one of the number one sources of anti-inflammatory. If you wanna be healthy, do it from cactus fruit and coconut water. 
and yeah. tangerine juice. You know what I mean? How many trees we got now? Eleven. Oh God, I'm gonna run out of trees. I gotta think now. Oh, any kind of olive, olive tree. In the Bible, right? Is the olive tree in the Bible? I'm not. Yes. Okay. Plant it. Get the ones that fruit, delicious fruits, and keep them pruned up. So olive, you can cure them, and there's nothing better than curing your own olives and learning how to do that because it makes you empowered. I really believe that I'm gonna end the tour with a little uh, little speech for like one second, but I believe that if you guys invest your money into your edible landscape, it will pay you back better than the stock market because even Donald Trump is gonna wish he had better health and all his money can't save him from a disease that his diet probably created. So if you guys can start now while we're all walking around and doing pretty good, start eating more fruits and vegetables. Even if you're not vegan, if I teach you how to garden, you're gonna eat more vegan stuff. And you'll be filled up and you'll be healthier for it. And we'll all live together and be old, old people together, <laughs> rocking it. We've been trained to go into the fridge and to go out to the store and then to go to the grocery store and buy whatever they put in front of it, which is like one variety of eggplant, one variety of tomato. And why when you go in the grocery store does it doesn't smell like anything? How can there be all that produce in there and doesn't smell like anything? Is that scary to anybody else? Am I starting your guys' mind going? How the corporate master. The smell is the nutrients. So when it's when you go to a farmer's market and you catch a smell of a tomato, that's nutrients. When I grow sweet peppers, they are as sweet as apples. Love it. But they're smaller. They're like this big. Yeah. And I go to fries and it's like they're yeah. this big. I'm like, what the hell? And I taste it and it's like water. Yeah. So I really believe that if you guys want to experience real food, go to another country and go to a farmer's market or grow it yourself. Who had a question over here? I did. Yes, go ahead. Do you use the chicken manure? Oh, yeah. So the reason why my chickens do not smell is because I throw tons of wood chips in there with them. And if a chicken were to just poop on the ground, the manure begins to smell. But the wood chips are full of carbon and they neutralize the nitrogen in the poop so it gets no smell. So my wood chips are in the chicken area and once a year I scrape it all out and I put a little shovel full in each tree well. So each tree gets a little scoop of the chicken wood chip manure mix. They get a clean coop, I get free fertilizer and I move on. And then four times a year when I feed my fruit trees, I do a mixture of compost, worm castings, the rock dust powder, I have an adopted rabbit over there, like a 30 pound fat rabbit named Chubbs. <laughs> some of Chubbs pellets, some of the rabbit wood chips, or not rabbit, but the chicken wood chips. Mix it all together with some straw, I like guess straw bale. Okay. And it's like this yeah. potpourri of crap. Yeah. <laughs> but it's tree food, and right. I just will take about three or four handfuls around each tree's trunk, like a little bit of, of, of a massage in, and move on 200 times. And then when the rain hits, it waters it in, and then my trees over time get fed naturally. You can feed them with fertilizer, but see, fertilizer is like steroids. Eventually, you're gonna get short-term growth, but eventually it wears you down, right? And fruit trees will eventually use that fertilizer, that synthetic fertilizer, to have great growth at first, but eventually it pulls so much out of the earth to have that growth that eventually the earth is gone. So it's important to build the soil, um, have a good soil stability over long term. So permaculture, right? Yeah, Look up that absolutely. word. So if I can go through here really quick, let me show you guys one thing. This tree here is a Barbados cherry, Acerola, and it's just starting to come back from the winter. So see how it's getting its flowers and its leaves? This guy fruits cherries eight months out of the year, and they're Acerola cherries, right. highest form of vitamin C on the planet. Yeah. And it loves the full sun, hates the cold, but it survived the cold pretty well this year. That's what the soil kind of looks yeah. like underneath the ground. And you're supposed to like ooh and awe this. Yeah. And you can see worms in there. Um, like right here by my, by my palm, there's like a worm tail right there. And there's like roly polies, there's some roots, there's like a little worm up top there. So every single, there's like a cockroach on my hand. I can feel them. Roly poly earwigs. I don't see a lot of scorpions. So I have a ton of geckos. And uh, underneath the wood chips, my soil looks like this. And the floor that you're standing on right now, we poured it ourselves, we poured it about one foot above the native clay. So you guys over there are about one foot above this floor, so there's two feet of wood chips below you. And I've, so how many of you have gotten a load of wood chips delivered to your house so far? Oh my God, I made your hand so up. much yesterday. <laughs> okay, if you guys wanna, can you guys see me better if I stand up here or in the yeah, middle is better? Yeah, better. Okay, if you guys wanna start using wood chips, wood chips are free in the city here. Okay, you can get them for, for free. Ow. I got five different sources. Number one way to get wood chips is to be cool like Fonzie. 
<laughs> okay, if you're high maintenance, like anything with life, if you're high maintenance, they're never gonna come back to your house again. They're never gonna drop with, with you. If you're cool with them, because right. they're like salt of the earth, hardworking people that just were like all day chipping trees. They don't wanna hang out with you or like, they, they don't wanna have a high maintenance person. Cause they're used to taking the wood chips to the dump, waiting in line for half an hour, paying 120 bucks, dumping the wood chips and then going on and trimming more trees. So they, they would rather dump at your house cause it's free for them. But they wanna dump quick and move on. Yeah. And they want to dump the entire load. <laughs> and who is, who's had wood chips delivered so far? Oh, yeah. Who was overwhelmed by how much it was? It's a lot. It's a lot. I've done that 55 times so far. Wow. 55 loads and I've spread them all over the yard. The wood chips keep the moisture in the soil. They also, um, over time, break down into that black gold. They also keep the roots of the trees cool in the summer and warmer in the winter. If I had a, th I had a thermometer this winter by my pool, it was 35 degrees there. And over in the corner over there, it was 50 this last winter time. I did a YouTube video about it. So that 200 steps of, of distance was 15 degrees different temperature because of the pond and the wood chips and the amount of density of growth over here. If you go to chipdrop.in, people in my uh, gardening group have been saying they've been getting chips. Have you gotten yeah. some of them? I'm yeah. the one that posted that. Is it good? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, good. They were good chips. Let's talk about gardening. So if you guys want to go to my main garden area, kind of go around it, or if you want to go inside, just those date palms there are very sharp. Don't be hitting the eye. <laughs>